Talk about this. This week, the name on the marquee has got to be Justin the Highlight Gaethje, who this past weekend, in front of 18,000 strong at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah, in the main event of UFC 291, defeated Dustin the Diamond Poirier, exacting his revenge, was once finished by Poirier a few years ago, now finishes Poirier by knockout with a unexpected head kick in the second round, the official time, one minute flat of round number two. Mark, did you see a head kick knockout coming from Gaethje, and what were your impressions of the performances of both these men overall, your take of the fight? No, I did not. Um, I said this to you guys already, but I, I never did I imagine a scenario where Poirier got put out cold with one shot. But to be fair, all bets are off when it comes to a head kick, and uh, that is what it took. But it's what Gagey delivered. Clap it up for that, man. The, the BMF, what a win. Um, it was fun while it lasted. The, the first round was awesome. It was like the perfect appetizer round of violence for the war that we all thought we were kind of settling in for. I thought Gaethje looked really noticeably good out of the gate. The first three minutes or so of that fight, I thought were all Gaethje. He was really measured, countering beautifully, landing the leg kicks. But Dustin wouldn't stop coming forward. He ends up landing those two big lefts. One of them really hit Gaethje clean in the eye, and you could tell Gaethje was feeling him. Then Dustin connects on a big right in an exchange. But then over the last minute or so, Gaethje kind of gets it back under control and, and reestablishes himself. So that round ends, and it's like, man, I'm not sure who took it. Like, there were some big shots. Feels like we have the, the makings of another potential classic. And Justin Gaethje was just not interested. Comes out in round two, almost immediately connects with a, with a head kick knockout for the record books. It's the same combo that we saw from Alex. Alex Caceres that I raved about on here where he faked the right jab threw the right head kick and struck gold man I mean couldn't have landed cleaner or heavier and Dustin Poirier went out he he got the hand up but it was it was a little too forward because of the fact that Gaethje threw that right jab first and he had the hand up to block a jab and obviously the head kick kind of wraps around that and he didn't get the hand back in time and he got caught so Justin Gaethje gets it done. He, he gets his revenge on Justin. He gets the BMF title. He gets his undisputed title shot if he wants or his Connor payday if he wants, which we'll get to. He gets everything, kind of one, one perfect combination. And suddenly Justin Gaethje, the underdog coming into this fight, has it all. A legacy establishing W for Justin Gaethje. And as much as I'm gutted for, for Dustin, I'm, I'm very happy for Justin. 100%. Omar, bringing you in here, uh, what did you think of that technique that he threw, uh, camouflaging that head kick with a little bit of a, was it a right straight? And uh, give us your take of the performances overall, both of these uh, fantastic, legendary lightweights. Yeah, it was a right straight right into a right kick. Um, <clears throat> it's actually something that we've been working on at the gym lately. I'm not super great at it. Um, there are guys who, who mask it a lot better and turn their hip over a lot better than I do when it comes to that specific technique. But the thing that's cool about it is that that cross is not really meant to do anything but annoy you and kind of just like pester your face a bit. Um, but it is in that moment that the opening for the kick comes. Um, so it's a, it's a big deal. <clears throat> I can't remember if the Caceres – I feel like the Caceres one was almost a lead – a lead kick and not a rear kick like this one was this one kind of gave me more leon edwards kamaru usman vibes uh leon's with the way the technique side, though. yeah well so was this one this one was leon's right was, leon's was not same side leon's was, leon's a, left was a left head kick and a right head kick no it was a yes. left to a left head kick it was not i'll bet you one million dollars well find the God clip right it. now i might be saying the the sides backwards because he's because he's not he's southpaw side. He's southpaw, yeah. so I know it was different. But yeah, I believe it was Leon... right paw to left head kick. Whatever it was, it was not the same side. No, I think it was a left straight, a left straight to a left head kick. You guys want to bet? Right. Let's. I don't, bro. I I haven't even gotten paid yet. I can't do all that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm picturing. No, it was left to left. Yeah, it I should have bet. Straight. God damn it! It was a left straight to a left. It's head kick. not. I'm watching it right now. 
So I just watched it's it a, too. It's a right paw. No, that's his left. And hand. then a left head kick. Oh, oh, you're saying the way he extends the left hand? Yes, All that's right. the combo. There. It's yeah, that's different the combo. than what Gagey did. And Usman, that's why it's the, the left, combo. It's the same thing. The, the same time he throws the left head kick. That's why the, the back the right. back punch is not supposed to actually. Why are you yeah, it's, Did I just meet you? The the back punch is not supposed to to like land. It's it's supposed to be there to distract you from the head kick. So it's the same technique. It's it's the same hand, same kick. It's same time though, Leon. Yeah, Leon just reached with the left as he threw the left head kick. The paw was with hands. the right. But if you watch the way he throws kicks, though, if you watch the way he throws his kicks normally, he doesn't do that all the time. That's just yeah, not the I mean, way he fair. throws a kick. Fair. So that is the setup, though. The Gage setup is, is the right hand or the, the, the rear hand to the rear kick, whether you're southpaw or orthodox. I think Gaethje's was more of a setup, personally. I, I'm not I, even I, sure I think we're splitting hairs. Left, left hand. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I think Usman literally ducked, ducked into that kick. Because he was moving from the hand. He was slipping. That was the whole purpose. Yeah. He's slipping the left hand and he ran his face into the left kick. It's the same thing. The timing might be a little bit different and and the way it looks might be a little bit different, but the technique is the same. I thought the techniques were very similar, but Usman's looked worse because what I I said a little bit. Usman was slipping. Because he died. Yes. Poirier was was uh, Poirier was blocking and it got kind of through slash past the block. Well, Poirier, if you go back and watch it, Poirier was blocking the hand yeah. and tried to get his hand up to block right. the kick before it. But the kick was, it, it was, he was too late at that point. That kick wrapped around his head. He was done at that Do point. Do you know, does this like have a your, name? Your, whole, your block, whole arm like a, basically needs to be up to block. Does this have a name when you do this? Like a triangle with your arm kind of thing? Just block. I, I don't think it has a name. It's just... It, I when I describe it to people, and I know it's it's a term that a lot of people hate using because it seems like it's overused. But I literally tell people to just answer the phone. Yeah, like that's how I explain it to people that don't know how to do it normally or don't really add it to their rep or haven't added it to their repertoire yet. I just kind of describe it as answering the phone. Uh, but nice. yeah. Uh, okay. Caceres is now. Who did Caceres do it to? I can't even think. I don't. Remember. It was somewhat recent. It was recent though. though. Yeah, it was a Rosa, wasn't it? Yes, like it, it was, was Julian Arosa. Rosa. Here we go. I yep. just found it. I want to see how how his was. Yeah, yeah see, feel- hit, they're all a little bit different. Leon's is is same time, which is why I didn't even like credit it that same way. But I get your point. Gaethje is kind of fakes the jab, goes with the head kick. Alex actually like fully throws the jab and then throws the head kick. It's all like yeah. a progression, totally of the same sequence. Was his <clears throat> was his a was his a lead kick though, or was his a rear no. kick also? Because that that I can't remember. Uh, no, because Sarah surprised everybody with that kicking. Watched. Anybody who was watching that. Um, yeah, I can't that. remember. Yeah. I'm watching it now. We're off the rails here. Our our viewers yeah, love watching us watch. He was kind of moving forward as he threw the videos. It. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That one was also it was different timing because that one was an entire cross, like you said. It was Correct. an entire cross that missed and then the kick came up after it. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the one to the Gaethje to the Caceres is the full progression of different ways you can throw <laughs> that combo. A hundred percent. And at the end of the day, when it comes to fighting, timing is everything. There are different timings and different beats to the same techniques that you can modify and do and and you kinda have to adjust them based on who you're fighting and their timing as well. So the technique, like I said, is the same. But the way people have to set it up, the way people have to throw it, the way people have to adjust, you might see little differences here and there. But, you know, the way I've learned it is a lot more like the Leon way to do it, where I'm throwing the punch as my kick is coming behind it. Because I want that kick to be there while my hand is all up in his face. That's kind of where how I've learned it. I suppose the window, yeah, that window is a very short window. Cool point. 100%. Uh, and again, like the way I'm learning, I'm learning Muay Thai, right? So I'm not worried about takedowns or anything like totally. that. So I'm putting my blast into the kick while trying to distract with the punch. Totally. Totally. Let's talk about... Omar, were you saying anything else about Justin? We went down this rabbit hole. I didn't know if you wanted to say anything further. Uh, I mean, it, the fight was great, man. It, it, it was a painful, painful way to go out. I, I definitely didn't see Justin getting knocked out or uh, Dustin getting knocked out for that matter. 
But um, but I thought the first round was really close. I I think I actually gave it to uh, to Dustin in the end, but it didn't really end up mattering once we got to the second round. It was a beautiful setup, and and he caught him relatively clean, man. And we've never I've. I think the last time we saw Dustin even drop like that was against McGregor way back when, but not it's not even the same. It's just crazy. Michael well, Johnson. Also, uh, Michael buddies. Johnson. Oh, For, that's right. Yeah, forgetting Michael Johnson folded him. Yes. That's what I just said. Yeah. yeah. We're on that baby delay. We're on so, that yeah. delay, baby. Are we Loving that it. delayed that he didn't hear me for that long? Oh no, I said God, it before you. So long after. Yes. You thought no, you I was asking so no, much after me. No. A lot of up. Uh, you were definitely after. That's so funny. You were definitely after. Uh, it's okay. We're going to work through it. This delay is pain. pain. It is. If anybody out there wants to send me uh, a cool $1,000 for a new computer, that would be uh, awesome. We take donations. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, Omar, tell me this. Let's talk about the winner, man. Justin Gaethje. He is now in the winner's circle. He is in the driver's seat. If you were the matchmaker of the UFC, what would you be nudging him towards? Title shot or McGregor payday or who knows what? Viva Mexico. He's half Mexican. We didn't know that until yesterday. I think from a business perspective, I think either one of them really works. I I think either one of them sells. So I think it's realistically at this point about situationally what ends up happening over the course of the rest of the year, Um, especially with the Charles Oliveira Islam rematch. And then kind of seeing where McGregor is. Like, we don't really know what his deal is anyway. Whether he can fight right now. Like, we don't know about the drug testing thing with USADA. Whether he started drug testing or not. Um, You know, we've had Dustin already talking publicly about it. Justin Gaethje as well. About him not really wanting to fight anybody on steroids. And that that boy needs to get tested. Which I don't necessarily disagree with. He's He is not passing any of the smell tests that we have. So... I, I don't really hate that take, but if, if it's not McGregor, then I think he does need to wait for the winner of uh, Islam and um, Oliveira and get that title shot again. I, I think he deserves it at this point. The kid is a beast, and he doesn't really lose to anybody but the elite of the elite. And I think he's gotten to a point now where he can go ahead and get well, that rematch if he needs it. What about you, buddy? You think is next for, for Gaethje McGregor title shot? What do you think? <clears throat> I mean, as always, I get it if a guy chooses the Conor McGregor payday. And it's surprising to me, at least, that it seems like Gaethje might be considering that. Because for a guy that constantly talks about how the title is the only thing that matters and how it's not about the money or the fame and only about being the best, I didn't see him choosing that when he has what seems like an undisputed title shot sitting in front of him. Um, because it is right there. Like, you, you can't deny him. After that, he absolutely needs to get the winner of Islam Charles too. I guess Volk is in the picture, but for me, mm. and I'm and I would guess for the UFC, when you have an Iliad Saporia there, it becomes very easy to be like, you know what, we got to give this to Gaethje. Let Volk do this Saporia fight, which is a big fight, and we'll circle our way back to Volk in a bit. Yep. So it certainly seems like it's there for him, but in the past, you know, day or two here, it seems like he is shockingly more open to this Connor fight than anyone thought he was going to be. So we'll see what's really true or not true. Yeah, man. Okay. Uh, anything else you guys want to say about this main event fight? I agree. I think uh, I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed that we did not get like a four or five round classic that this fight could have been. Yeah. Uh, but all all props to Justin Gaethje, man. And props to Justin Poirier for hand, handling this one like a like a champion, uh, you know, such I'm happy stud. for that guy. He is a, such a stud. All right, let's move on love, now to the I loved co- his line of when he was like, um, we're not – I loved his line when he was uh, like, we're not at a funeral here. I, I've already won at life. That was just a great, great mature perspective to have on the whole thing. But um, yeah, as for Dustin, before, before we move on, I am genuinely interested to see – what he does because he talks all the time lately about you know since the connor fights about how he is set now financially and he's made it in life as i just said and his family is set and that he's only still fighting because the one thing he has not achieved is being the champion but after that loss he is now multiple fights away from being the champion so i really am curious what's going through his mind 
at, at this point. Um, and I also know that he has been pretty candid about the fact that he doesn't want to fight up and coming dudes. Like, I don't think he's saying yes to a Sarukian. I don't think he's saying yes to a Grant Dawson or to the Fazeev Gamrot winner. Like, it seems like these guys are not something he's wanting to put his body on the line for. So, I mean, maybe they go him and Daryush. I guess that one you could argue does make sense and does get him to say yes. So, I guess that's my guess. He didn't sound like he was going to be done, but I'm I'm very curious to see what what his next move is going to be. Huh. Yeah, Omar, what about you? What do you think is next for uh, Dustin? Yeah, the Dariush one was the one that I kind of had in mind. Um, but but Mark makes a valid point. I mean, there's not really a lot else for Dustin to do unless he wants to put the effort back into kind of going back up. And it's not like he fell very far, but he's probably at least two wins away from getting at least another title shot somewhere along the line or at least a number one contender shot or something like that, something that, that really is, is going to cement a shot at gold. Um, but he's going to have, I, I would imagine he has to get through Darius at this point. They're both coming off losses to big names. They're both still trying to go for the, for the title shot. I think to me, that's the one that makes the most sense. The Gamrot Fazeev one, I think would make sense from a stylistic standpoint, right? I think that would just be fun to watch somebody like Fazeev or somebody like Gamrot fight a Dustin Poirier, but that's, that's like a fan kind of thing. It, it, it wouldn't make as much sense. I think for, for Poirier in the long run, um, so, Darius, I think, makes the most sense if he doesn't retire, but I wouldn't be surprised if he hangs it up at this point if he doesn't really see a, a clear path to gold. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed, too, because I would have loved to see Dustin face off against Islam, and now we're probably never going to get that fight. Unless it's some kind of crazy last-minute, like, yeah. uh, you know, week's notice replacement or something like that. So, yeah, man. Uh, congrats to Justin Gaethje once again. Let's now move on to the co 